Because this is a motorcycle and because that face looks like Iron Man's helmet, this could very well be Transformers meets Iron Man. But that was if it's in a shade of maroon. It's not because you see the maroon color is a favorite of the Triumph Street Triple RS. And that is one motorcycle that the new MT-09 has in its crosshairs. The MT-09 has been gunning for the Street Triple for a while, but this fourth attempt is more serious. It's ready to take on the Street Triple on the road, the track, in the wallet, and even in its design. Remember the MT-09 that was briefly sold in India? That had that Dark Knight inspired face, right? So it's like Batman exchanges helmet for Tony Stark's. And what you have is a very bold looking design just as before or even bolder now. This is still an extrovert on two wheels, a motorcycle that doesn't like to get lost in the crowd. The MT-09 looks even better in black, fully embracing Yamaha's dark side of Japan. Its twin-eye LED headlights and minimalist bodywork give it a robotic, menacing stare, much more aggressive than the Street Triple's organic look. This bike isn't about refinement, it's raw and built to stand out. Yamaha kept the MT-09 focused on riding, avoiding unnecessary gadgets but it's still packed with modern tech. The sharp TFT display, for example, provides all the essential info without clutter, perfectly matching the bike's minimalist design. The bike is also loaded with rider aids like a standard quick shifter, traction control and multiple riding modes to tailor the bike's behavior to your style. While the Street Triple RS may boast its track-ready electronics, the MT-09 feels like a toolkit for the urban jungle. However, our time on the Sodegawara racetrack outside of Tokyo showed that the MT-09 is just as explosive on the track. With a 6-axis IMU and fully adjustable KYB suspension, Yamaha has tuned the electronics to enhance, not interfere with the ride, making it perfect for those who prefer a street brawl over a calculated duel. The MT-09 suspension has been tuned to balance sporty handling with everyday comfort, featuring fully adjustable KYB forks up front and a KYB monoshock at the rear. It is happiest when pushed hard, but you can easily tweak the setup to suit your preferences, which is a big plus. The light, nimble chassis makes cornering a breeze, with sharp yet forgiving handling for quick direction changes. Compared to the Street Triple RS, which feels like a precise scalpel, pun intended, the MT-09 is more like a well-honed axe, precise but with a bit more heft. It's stable at speed with wide handlebars offering great leverage in tight corners and exits don't make the front feel floaty like before. The MT-09 feels planted and offers excellent feedback from both ends, making it a blast on winding roads, city streets or even the racetrack. Now you heard me say track days and if you want to do that often, you might just want to get the SP variant, that is if Yama India brings it to India of course. The SP variant is going to get you better brakes and better suspension. And while that may not sound like much, out on the track, it makes a world of a difference. Like for example, on the racetrack that we are riding right now, there's a 100 meter marker down the start finish straight. On the standard model, I have to brake a little earlier because the brakes also feel a little bit spongy when you are at speed and you put in a few laps. And the suspension, that also feels a little bit squishier when you really start pushing it hard. But just that suspension difference, just the stiffer suspension and those Stylema brakes on the SP, it just transforms the bike into a completely different piece. So while the standard can easily take on even the Street Triple RS, the SP is going to push the envelope further. The motorcycle is powered by Yamaha's 890cc CP3 engine, which is a gem. This triple sender unit has always been a standout for Yamaha, and for 2024, it's been refined even further. It delivers 119 PS, which is 9 PS lesser than the Street Triple RS, but compensates with more torque. It's not just about the numbers though, it's about how they're delivered. The MT-09 packs its punch early, with power and torque kicking in from as low as 3500 RPM, making it a real powerhouse. The engine, it's called the Yamaha CB3. That's their tech speak for a three-cylinder motor. And this is where I think Yamaha's acoustic engineers, because Yamaha loves doing sound, right? They have also gotten involved with the motor or the engineering department because you see the exhaust 
has two ports. So that's like a stereo speaker system so that you can hear a deeper audio. And just so that you definitely hear that deeper audio, they've also done what looks like speakers right here on top of the tank that's going to aid the induction sound. So even with your helmet, even with your plugs on, you're still going to have a much deeper sound experience from the motorcycle. That just adds to the riding drama, doesn't it? Calling its power punchy is an understatement. The mid-range could knock the wind out of you if you're not careful. Unlike the R1 or the R6 engines, which feel more refined, the MT-09's engine feels like it has been raised on the streets. Brutal, unforgiving, and yet thrilling. More Dark Knight than Iron Man. The razor-sharp throttle response also makes it a joy to attack a series of bends. We love the Street Triple RS for its sophistication, how smooth it feels. Now, Japanese engines, they are supposed to feel even smoother, right? But there's a newfound Japanese aggression that you will notice with this motorcycle and I say it in a really good way. This is a street fighter after all. But with the character of a triple and that kind of aggression, a newfound aggression like I mentioned, it's just a hoot to ride, whether you're out on the streets or even bringing it to a track day. The MT-09 has a mellower side too the YAMT variant. This model features an automated manual transmission, yes, AMT, eliminating the clutch lever and the gear selector, though Yamaha could have offered the latter as an accessory. The manual override gear selectors are conveniently placed on the handlebar, making CT riding easier. However, they're not too intuitive. The YAMT is all about convenience, low gear changes, rapid downshifts even under emergency braking, and the ability to negotiate tight sections without stalling. Yamaha claims the shifts are nearly as quick as the standard model's quick shifter. And we agree. A switch on the right handlebar lets you toggle between the MT and the AMT modes with a D mode for city riding and D plus for more spirited riding. However, the Y AMT is clearly aimed at casual riders who prioritize convenience over performance. On the track, it became evident that the AMT isn't suited for the spirited edge of the seat riding that this engine demands. The AMT software often upshifts mid-corner when you're maintaining steady throttle like you should, upsetting the bike's balance and dropping revs just when you need power. Similarly, under hard braking before a corner, the AMT may not downshift enough, leading to wider lines and potentially hairy moments. Happened to me a couple of times. So if you're looking to cruise the streets without worrying about gear changes and hardcore sport riding isn't your thing, the YAMT could be a great option for you. Now the riding ergonomics, they have also improved slightly. So what they've done is pulled in the handlebars a little bit, you're looking at a steeper rake angle and then also adjusted the foot pegs to sit back a little bit. So it gives you a more aggressive riding for sure without being too impractical because this is still supposed to be a nice read naked, right? And then it also has its advantages when you're out on the track. You can nicely lock your knees into the tank when you need to corner hard, when you need to lean over quite a bit. And then there is plenty of cornering clearance as well. And whether you choose the standard or the SP, the suspension setup is actually quite good. And then you can also fine tune it to your liking. The SP is just gonna allow you to fine tune it that bit further. So overall, in terms of the handling, whether it's out on the street, on your favorite mountain roads, or even on the racetrack, the MT-09 is a boat to ride. So even if Yamaha India doesn't bring the SP variant to India, it's not gonna be up a top of inch, is what I'm saying right now. Maybe I'll change my thoughts when the bike launches back home in India. Now looking at the pricing of the R3, looking at the pricing of the previous MT-09 that was sold in India, I'm sure that this one is not going to be a budget option. But that's it. The kind of equipment it has, the way it looks, that beautiful sound, a beautiful engine, the way it performs out on the roads, each of it on the track, I think it's a wholesome package and one that will carve out a niche for itself. Now, like I said, I love the Street Triple RS. I know many of you out there love too. But listen to me carefully when I say this. This actually sets a new benchmark, even though RS did that just last year. In conclusion, 2024 MT-09 isn't just a return to form for Yamaha. It's a statement. The dark night of the streets is back 
ready to take on the best. Whether you are a seasoned rider looking for new thrills or someone who appreciates a well-crafted motorcycle, the MT-09 is worth your attention. It's not perfect, but that is part of its charm.